Yeah, well, actually, I, I, I printed out this, uh, this blog post. David sent it to me uh, earlier this week that you wrote about the music of the Trader's Blade and how you went listed through different scenes and the sort of musical accompaniment of those. Um, and I wanted to, uh, I'll just read one of them. This is uh, from Kest's fight song. This is from Trader's Blade. And in your head, you associated the song Mirando by Ratatat, uh, which is a great band, by the way, and a very good song. And this is what you wrote. Being a swashbuckling adventure tale, Trader's Blade has a lot of sword fights, battles, and other action scenes. Falcio, Kest, and Brasti are very different sorts of fighters, and finding their pacing came in part by listening to songs that just seemed to match the tempos of their dueling styles. The hardest people to fence are the ones with unusual and unpredictable timing, and this odd piece of electronica, Mirando by Ratatat, has a rhythm that helped me conceive of Kest's fluid style. There are little beats within beats, and the rest between some of the notes are just the kind of stuttering style that would throw an opponent off in a sword fight. And I, yeah, like I really love that you, that you take music and, and apply it in this sort of way. And I wanted to sort of get everyone's opinion on this, which is from that perspective, you are, are taking the rhythm and sort of pacing of a song and applying it to the actual act of writing and how a character reads how their movements read through the words that that you put onto the page so we'll start with Juliet, and then we'll kind of come back around to sebastian anthony and sebastian to sort of see like how how music um from a rhythmical perspective uh might actually affect the way that you write with the pacing and the and the word choice and things like that so sure, Julia? yeah, that's that's a very interesting one. I've never done anything like what uh, Sebastian just told us about with specific songs. Um, I think it's more general in my work. I think that um, traditional traditional music, folk music, and also oral storytelling of traditional stories, you know, fairy tales, folk tales. Those are the two elements that go into the the rhythm of what I write. Um, and I find myself, for instance, writing sentences where there's always three examples of something or three bits of description, and it goes along with that oral storytelling style, particular way of, of presenting a story. Um, and there are certainly musical rhythms there um but i don't sit down and think i'll do it in a particular way i think because i absorbed a whole lot of music and a whole lot of stories when i was too young to really think about you know what i was doing i mean i was a writer back then too but they tended to be more sort of the rampaging killer robots kind of story than the than the celtic epic um but i think that all sort of made its way in here and despite all the education in music analysis and structure and so forth, which plays a part in my writing as well, that sort of structured approach, approach I think that there's a, a natural rhythm and flow that goes through everything. Individual characters, probably in terms of character development, but not necessarily in the way they move. I mean, I have two musician characters in this most recent series, um, Levon, who's... Uh, sister of Brock. They're both musicians. They're both fighters. They're both working for this, you know, undercover agency, if you like, that infiltrates secrets and solves mysteries and so forth. So they can fight. They can play a part. And as musicians, they can infiltrate all sorts of settings and listen mutely to, you know, what they shouldn't be perhaps be hearing. Um, and her approach is always bold and out the front and taking risks and accepting challenges and so forth. So perhaps there's a certain flow of music that goes in her speech, certainly. Um, she's confident. She knows who she is. She knows she, what she wants to do. Um, Brock, who is an adopted child who doesn't know anything about who his real parents were and who, in fact, has a 
you know, that, that, all that, that will all unfold, is the one that has the very exceptional voice and the very exceptional um, way of playing the harp that sort of almost feels like magic. Um, is the kind of singer that will just keep the audience enraptured and is also a much quieter, gentler, less outgoing person, has joined up as a fighter in spite because his sister did, did because he thinks maybe he needs to keep an eye on her. She doesn't need anyone keeping an eye on her. Thank you very much. She's just fine. Um, but in terms of, you know, I can sort of envisage, I, I can imagine rhythms when I think of those two. Um, and certainly when Levon makes up lyrics and sings and, the, and makes up tunes, um, there's a rhythm to those that are specifically hers and it's a much livelier rhythm than the, the flowing, graceful rhythm of his. Um, yeah, I always make up, I make up melodies, I don't borrow melodies, I make, up, I, I, um, I make up everything. I don't ever kind of sing them in public or get anyone to sing them in public, but I could technically. I'm, I'm not going to do it now. Um, yeah, sorry, that's very woolly, but it's more of a... Um, it's more of it's, it's something that carries me along that that flows along with me. It's not something I make a conscious decision to do. The way I check up on whether it's working is by reading my work, reading my drafts aloud myself, and see whether the rhythm and flow is is going. So that's a, that's a music approach, if you like, to um, to writing. And you soon find out if something's wrong. Um, I use a lot of commas that I probably don't strictly need to use in terms of correct English and my American editors in the first run of this series, you know, removed several hundreds of commas, no doubt, and then I put them all back in again when I checked it and <laughs> said, you know, it's not, it's not strictly to do with the rules of punctuation, it's to do with what it would sound like if you were reading it aloud. So it's got to sound like a piece of music when you're reading. And Anthony, what about you when you're, when you're um, writing? You told us that you don't listen to music while you're writing, but do you feel that unconsciously uh, through the writing process that your characters, different characters take on different rhythms and different pacing and different sort of uh, uh, inner voices? And, and how does that come out on the page for you? Um, well, if dialogue has a rhythm to it and so does prose, depending on what kind of scene you're writing. Uh, battle scenes have a definite rhythm to them there's a you know they, they have to peak and a trough and there's a lull and then there's you know the climax of the action and that kind of thing which is all you could all apply those terms to music so it's not because i don't typically listen to music when i'm right i'm not conscious of doing it you know why well, you've been something I've absorbed over the years so, you know uh, subconsciously um but yeah the, you do, you do have to find rhythms and, uh, you know, and different characters speak in different ways. If they all sound the same, uh, you're not really doing your job right. Uh, they all have to sound different. The rhythm of speech, I think, is a, is a key component in, in doing that. Uh, I was thinking again about battle scenes and, you know, I keep, seem, keep coming back to trailer music or film music, but in... You know, the talking about battle scenes in Gladiator, uh, the score during the battle scenes is all uh, waltzes. They basically took the form of a waltz and applied it to the battle scenes. When you listen to them, they sound quite Strauss-like, you know. So even though people aren't dancing, they're fighting. They, they, they applied that with them too. So I guess that might show up in my work when we're talking about the, the rhythm of an action scene. Yeah, well, that's very interesting because a waltz, you know, the, Sebastian. Um, when I read your your that that portion of your blog post, combat itself is a dance uh, of a sort. It's just a different kind of dance to a different uh, kind of rhythm with a different kind of purpose. But it is a creative action in a way. It's this individual who's evoking themselves and their personality through motions and uh and flourishes and all that kind of stuff that feels uh right to them and their personality and their combat style let's say um so sebastian would you like to jump in there and and sort of speak to that but also speak about how 
music, I mean, you, you've mentioned it a little bit before, but um, you can go into it again about how music plays into your actual writing process. Sure. I mean, I think one of the things I've often wondered about, so you notice this in fencing a lot, is especially um, I used to do epee fencing, which is the only real modern form of fencing. The others are crap. Uh, I say that in case there's any sa uh, saber fencers out there, because they always get super angry when I say that, and periodically I get angry letters. Um, but let's face it, your saber weapon is like so flexible. If you can bend it around your opponent's back and tap them on the back, even if they've parried, there's something wrong with that support. Anyway, um, now that I've, I've, I've got to devote a certain amount of every interview to getting in trouble, um, so that'll, that'll cover that. Um, but when you, when you fence, uh, you find sometimes um, one of the reasons why it's very hard for an experienced fencer to fence uh, a completely new fencer, why like a beginner has a bit of an advantage in a way, is that the beginner doesn't fall into the rhythms. And for reasons that I suspect have to do with fundamental things about human beings and how we connect to each other, we almost can't help but fall into rhythm. So even in a fight where you're trying to beat somebody else, you, you end up with this, you know, kind of rat tat tat sort of rhythm back and forth with each other. Like, so you, you, when you watch people fence, in a way, it starts to look like they're almost dancing together, which is one of the things that makes fencing one of the most unwatchable Olympic sports. Um, assuming they haven't booted out of the Olympics yet for competitive yo-yo or whatever the next uh, trend is. Um, and, so, and, and so that's something that's interesting to me is that even, even when fighting, there's a degree to which human beings can't help but dance with each other um, and, and sort of make music together. It's, it's a foul music, of course, but um, because ideally we shouldn't be trying to kill each other, but it always seems like it's there. In terms of writing process, I mean, it's really simple. I have a tremendous difficulty generating ideas while sitting down, staring, you know, at, at the screen. Um, I think it's just a kind of an, uh, an anxious disorder. Um, and so a lot of the times when I'm developing scenes, uh, it's when I'm running or, or walking. Uh, and when I run, I sort of tend to listen to music. And, and that process for me is like both simple and, and slightly embarrassing, which is I'll often, I'll hear a song, uh, you know, I'll have a playlist of songs or, or on the radio and I'll hear a song and there'll be something about it that kind of strikes me. And then I'll just start playing that song on a loop and I'll be running and it'll just sort of conjure scenes and, and dramatic beats and bits of dialogue in my head until, uh, until something strikes me and I start crying, which is uh, tremendously embarrassing. I'm not a very emotional person person but i suspect that's due to some kind of uh traumatic disorder because when i'm because when i'm running and i and i come up with an emotional scene in my head i start crying my eyes out um and and that's when i'm like okay there it is that that's worth writing about um that's that's something that's meaningful enough to me that it's worth putting on the page and so you know typically it'll be things like well like when i was writing trader's blade uh there's 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 a song, it was, the, it was the theme song to Casino Royale um, by Chris Cornell of, of Soundgarden. And it was very unpopular as a song. It's called uh, You Know My Name. And it's got some really interesting pauses and, and uh, sort of changes in dynamics in it. And, and that became, I played that song like a thousand times over, and that became a whole sequence in Trader's Blade where Falcio is just kind of waiting for this moment because as soon as the sun goes down, that's when the, this kind of what's called the blood week begins. And, and there's no laws against kind of killing other people during that time. I think people always refer to the purge now when they talk about Trader's Blade. And uh, I haven't seen the purge, but I assume that's the concept. And, and that song became sort of the basis for that. And so, and that's often the case. Uh, there's all sequences there will be sequences in a book where people will say, I love your book, but I hate that whole love thing with Ithalia, one of the characters. And I'll be like, yeah, but I was listening to uh, um, Island in the Sun by Weezer and it, you know, felt right. So that's, that's what you get. And, it, and, in, and, and in, sometimes in literal ways, because literally what it, that sort of romance, that sort of um, unfulfillable romance uh, until, until, you know, in, in that series, she talks about an island that they could go to together and get away from all the violence and bloodshed. Um, and that was cause I listened to, you know, uh, I, uh, I had to play that Weezer song in a band. And so I started listening to it over and over again. And so that's, so it has a very, so, I mean, it's, it almost feels um, crass when I describe it, but I have a very blunt 
you know, way a mechanical way of using music as part of my writing process. It's, it's very sort of literal. Whereas I think what Anthony and Juliet are describing is is more music as a kind of an of an, an enriching force um, that that has more steps to go through before it becomes part of the text. <laughs> 